Welcome back to the Torque Test channel. In all likelihood, unless you're just too far gone of a tool geek, you've never heard of the M18-3062. But that's this. It's Milwaukee's latest mid-torque impact wrench, and unlike their 2962 model, that's 219 bucks, this is 1399 for the bare tool. Yeah, I'm not kidding. So today we're gonna test this thing versus what it says it can do, max it out on the dyno, take it apart to see how it works, then conclude if this very well might be just accidentally the best mechanics friend, or well, rich friend, that you could dream of. Fair warning, it might get nerdy around here when we're talking about torque, so bear with me. This stuff is just cool. Now you'd think, like we would, the most expensive impact from old Team Red would look something like this. But no, it's this by quite a margin now, which we have thanks to Jay at Ohio Power Tool for letting us borrow his. They carry all the brands over there, so no dog in the fight here, though not sure anyone else is making something quite like this. Fear not though, if you're already out on this thing because of its $1,400 sticker price, they also make a new compact version for the bargain price of just $1,299. You know, just to keep Harper Freight on their toes, something <laughs> for everyone here. And if you're still confused, I wouldn't worry about it. You see, Milwaukee has been traveling the country, mainly talking to large-scale commercial job site and solar installation outfits about these tools. But while everyone at the Pipeline show this past year was ooing and aahing over the Forge battery or new Gen 3 high torque, I was eyeing this exhibit that almost no one covered with the little dyno setups like ours, funky looking mid torques that looked just a little off compared to their usual ones, and lots of buzzwords like never before seen industry tech and machine learning algorithms and stuff like that. But essentially what we have here is the Milwaukee controlled torque impact wrench. That's both an impact wrench and would like a torque wrench in one. Now Milwaukee's not gonna call it a torque wrench because of technicalities and liability associated with that name. It isn't a gradual linear application of increasing turning torque until a cutoff. But they do say it replaces the need for a torque wrench on solar installations, so I'm thinking, you know, it'd be pretty sweet to replace the need for a torque wrench with an impact on lug nuts because you'd already have an impact out anyways taking this wheel off. So for practical purposes and considering what it advertises, let's assume for now this is a torque wrench that can also do good old fashioned ugga duggas in forward and reverse. And what it's advertising besides eye-watering prices, let's be honest, is enough accuracy to replace their own 2-3% to variation digital torque wrenches. But they also point out on average commercial installation technicians are off the allowed for range 10.9% of the time, so not sure what their goal is here, whether it's sub 10% or sub that 2-3%. to Let's find out, and we'll take a look at the tool and user interface first. So this thing's sort of wild. It's more digital IP than it is a actual hard where tool situation. You can do a lot of the features that one key can on most tools, but there's some added crazy stuff in here too. You can make it blink to find it. You can change the brightness of these front LEDs and for how long they stay on after a trigger pull. These are the preset and custom modes. Usually three is the top setting of power on a tool, but out of the box, it's only set to 2067 RPM, we'll change that to 2400, and bolt removal speed is just in the off, so we're going to max that out as well. You can also change your precision mode levels and customize those as well. And then in mode one is what we're going to be changing to torque sense. Now torque sense comes with a lot of different settings and options as well. You can change the LED color when it's hit the torque setting you want. We'll leave that on magenta. You can change the brightness of the color, duration for that. Direction lock, whether you want this torque to apply only in forward or reverse as well. Double hit prevention, so if the bolt's already tight, this will stop you from tightening it again. It does request that you put both hands on the tool. It doesn't explain why, but I imagine that's so that it can sense what's going on and you have to have a rigid body in order to do that. Then you input the amount of torque you want to set this to, and then you go through your start rundown process. This is where you're going to pull the trigger and then use a torque wrench to remove it and input the value you get off the torque wrench. Now we have a whole dyno setup with bolt tension, so we don't need to do that, and hopefully it should provide it an even more accurate target to hit, but we're going to see. 
So that's an important point. We have a dyno setup that's really just a bolt tension measurement, how tight a bolt is, whereas torque is simply a measurement of your input force, not how tight the bolt is gonna be. A good example of this is if I tack welded this bolt head here onto the dyno, you could still put 200 foot pounds on a torque wrench and it would beep at you all happy like when it hit 200, but the bolt would still show zero tension because it wasn't tightened. Similarly, you could apply this to a more realistic scenario with rust or a lock nut, same 200 foot pounds in, but let's say only 60% of that torque becomes bolt tension, whereas perhaps a full 80% of that would be on a perfect or greased threads. In physics, this is called K factor. Essentially engineers want this. It's bolt tension. You, Joe Schmo, only have this, your effort, with a certain lever length to offer, and a torque wrench measures that. That's called torque. K factor is the thing messing this up for everyone. So engineers just sort of approximate how much grunt you should input in order to get a good likelihood of getting enough tight without the bolts yielding. The first step is to calibrate the tool to your hardware and joint. So let's do that. 10 runs, you record the torque each time, and the tool is supposed to undershoot, then overshoot several times, and hone in on that target towards the end. Values on screen here, of course it'd be lovely if the tool just knew the size, condition, and type of hardware going into any situation, and you could just hit 100 foot-pounds universally. But that's not really how bolted joints work, but with four profiles on the gun, you could keep four different ones accessible without touching the app. It's pretty useful. And we'll be throwing all types of curveballs at this thing today, socket types, battery types, battery charge levels, hardware size, going down in bolt size versus up, bolt heads versus nuts, just finding its weak spots, then of course throwing this thing on the dyno and maxing it out because something I've forgotten to mention so far is this impact is only rated for 250 foot-pounds or at least 250 foot-pounds of torque sense, no bolt breakaway rating or anything like that, and yet it's a larger tool, so we want to see what it can do, you know, for fun. Okay, with the torque sense all sensed up, let's do some hits to see if it's been dialed into 100. One hundred and one foot pounds. One hundred and three, one hundred and two, and one hundred. You can keep the trigger pulled, it just stops there. Let's turn on the double hit prevention feature and see what happens then. So initially it hits its 101 foot pounds, and then each trigger pull is five to six foot pounds. Even with one hand on the tool, we find this can go as low as three to four with two solid hands on it, but I think most guys won't be holding onto it with two hands in preparation for doing something by accident in the first place. It's hard to drive home just how sought after an impact torque wrench is, or just impacts with precision customizable torque have been two brands since forever. There's always been high ratio gear reduced tools like these that do work sort of like a drill, but into the thousands of foot pounds sometimes with the reaction arm, but they're also a bit slow, often only working forward and is many times more expensive than even this pricey M18. Of course there's torque sticks, which might get you into a rough wheelhouse of limited torque to zip wheels on, but still requires a torque wrench when the car is on the ground. There's impacts with precision bolt modes like this DeWalt, but it's a fixed setting. It's repeatable, but varies based on bolt size and won't work on every lug nut size or solar farm, what have you. Then in our experience, there's one last category with adjustable output impacts, like one key app settings. And then there's this here, Chicago pneumatic cordless impact, but those can be, well, horribly off sometimes. This expensive CP impact made for wheels and tires, it's 50% setting being far from 50%. And with one key app adjustments, or you just knowing what your impact makes, you know your gun, they still require a torque wrench in the end because these tools all for the most part use two techniques, counting impact blows or limiting current to the motor or both, which can work in some cases, but once you encounter anything different, like a lock nut shown here on the backside of their transducer, it will hit with the same number of impacts in force, just not really tighten anything. All right, we're giving this new pricey guy too much unearned credit though. Let's throw a laundry list of variables its way and see how it handles them. Let's take this XC 5.0 we were using, drain it down to where it's hot and just one bar of juice left and see how the controlled torque does to do just that. Controlling torque despite just 16 volts being there instead of 1920. 101 foot pounds. 110, okay, going the opposite direction as we assumed, but still yeah, 104 foot-pounds, not bad. Now let's go from their standard battery to their best and highest performing one that happens to be a different cell type, the Forge with LiPo cell stacks. 
73 foot pounds and it cut off in a hurry in the same mode if we're looking at 68 foot pounds yeah this tool does not like the forged battery like it's surprised by the sudden increase in ipm and just slams the brakes again and again coming up short and then back to a three bar 5.0 now it's hitting exactly 100. but maybe that's not fair to the tool or it's just more picky than we were giving it credit for Let's program this tool to 200 foot pounds now with a forged battery so it can dial things in, expecting that more sudden burst of beans from the pack. And this one's a bit odd. Now it overshoots the target. It went from being within the torque wrench accuracy range, which is crazy to begin with, to well outside of one, 220 to 230 foot pounds here. And this is the wild part. Put an XC 5.0 back on the tool that was calibrated using a forge, and we're seeing 200 foot pounds, 202, 203. There's definitely something going on with the machine learning on this tool that assumes some things about voltage sag, peak current, or otherwise. You might want to mark the battery you use with this tool, or at least use the same type each time. And we also find that if you go through the testing process with a 5 amp hour on XC6 or HD12, does similarly to the forge, undershoots the target. But with those batteries, you do the calibration process with them and it looks more normal like we've been seeing again. Okay, what happens if you spin this bolt head around here and just use the impacting on the nut? So we're seeing 194, 193 foot pounds of the 200 foot pound target and 197 foot pounds, I'll take it. But you might have noticed our hardware is greased, which we do for testing all of our tools here. It's for consistency's sake since day one. Bolts are broken in with grease, then cleaned, then greased again before testing. But what if we swap in the same grade nine bow alloy bolt, washers and nut, but just dry now and no break in? Really messing with that whole K-factor thing we were talking about. And this was something we had hoped it would be better able to adapt to, like the lock nut demo that they showed in their display, 130 to 140 foot pounds is just not gonna cut it on a 200 foot pound target. You'll need to do your 10 step calibration with new hardware each time if that's what you plan on fastening, which credit to them, their app does point out. But given this comparison, we were hoping that it was smart enough to tell that the bolt hadn't been rotated enough despite a given number of ugga duggas going by. It's not the end of the world though. Let's say we're after lug nuts like this smaller M14 hardware we're gonna be using here. On this theoretical F250 Super Duty application, those lug nuts should be all in the same wheelhouse in appearance. And, and if they had rust on them on one end of the spectrum or some genius put anti-seize or grease on them on the other end of things, your torque wrench would be off anyway. So let's create a new theoretical F250 profile on the tool and see how it does after the startup procedure that we're gonna assign a gold color to. And it's a good idea too to save these profiles into a folder, not just a setting button on the gun. Something annoying we found with this tool is that these profiles that you put on the buttons, they get wiped out every so often, even without taking the battery off the tool. It's super annoying. A benefit of this whole bundle of technology deal is that they do advertise releasing software updates for this tool. So hypothetically, they could patch out this annoyance and I hope that's something that they can easily do here. But until then, save everything into a folder to be able to quickly assign your buttons again when it disappears. So for like an M14 lug stud, let's say like a 2023 Mustang with M14 studs, we're getting a rather consistent 140 upper 140s with a 150 foot pound target. And also if you release the trigger without the tool doing the stopping itself, you will get a flashing red at you letting you know that it wasn't impacted to spec. And lastly, a couple more curveballs. Socket selection, if you swap a chrome onto here, we find shallow or deep, it doesn't seem to make a difference. That's good because we can often measure that one on other impacts. And if you get a tool quite hot from repeated use, like the dyno runs we're gonna be showing coming up, such as reading 140 degrees on the outside, it still compensates and hits where you'd expect it to for the profile button you pressed. That's not too shabby. So let's fully dyno test this tool like we normally would and take it apart to play a game of spot the difference. It is a bit larger on the outside, so normally you'd assume more powerful. Our first test is called Working Torque, five seconds and forward. Here's the new 3062 taking on the seven times cheaper 2962. Two hundred and eighty-five under three thirty-seven in forward. 
okay, they did advertise some gap between these models, but also the highest number they assigned this tool is 250. We imagine people might be taking things off with it too, though, like we have here. Here's our best case scenario test, head to head with their best runs. Four hundred and twenty foot pounds, nice. So nowhere near two hundred and fifty. In a bind, it works much like a regular mid torque. So really earning those dollars. What's very odd to us is that in a first for the channel, a forge battery, well, it actually makes less on this tool. Still not in any customized torque sense mode, just maxed out in a preset mode for here. All the sliders to the max. It simply behaves very oddly with a forge battery in any setting. Weird stuff. When you open these things, you do see some more weird stuff too, and some stuff that looks very familiar. Mainly in the inside, you're just going to find a whole lot more wires and electronics like you would expect. Taking it apart can be more difficult, more connectors to unhook. There's basically just an entire extra wire harness in here, and that meets down to the larger board. The hammers themselves look almost identical, their weights being so close that there's only small changes here. And those small changes relate to the anvil, which there's a funny looking impact anvil on the new 3062. It overhangs the hammer in a way I've never seen before. And that's, we believe, in a way to communicate with the sensor PCB pairing in here. The meat and potatoes of this whole machine learning algorithm business, being able to monitor and communicate what the hammer and anvil are doing back to the board. Now impacts, unlike a drill, are really two separate disconnected systems working at the same time. A motor spinning something and a hammer hitting something. What connects them is a reset spring, and that spring severs the mechanical linkage between the motor and hammer, which is needed to not stall the motor out, as it needs to be operating at RPM to be efficient. But that means the entire time this thing's impacting, it's flying rather blind. It normally has no idea what's happening up here at the hammer, and more importantly up here at the anvil, which is connected to the socket and fastener. This pair of sensors and, well, learning tools provides feedback to the board about what the hammer is doing and in turn what that's doing to the bolt or nut in your case. If I were to try to take a stab at simplifying this process, it's like in a way the line marking method you might use with a torque wrench to make sure torque limiting extensions are working. The round sensor is watching how far the anvil is turning after impacting starts, which is picked up by the long sensor board here, the second PCB. Once impacting starts, it figures it's not running down the fastener anymore, but tightening them. Then by doing 10 test runs, you're teaching it how far is too far or too short to rotate that anvil to get to the desired torque. And that anvil by association is also the bolt head. I'd like to think it's far more space age hacker-like tech, but seeing as changing to a dry, unbroken in bolt trip this tool up, it impacting a bit early during that rundown, we think what I'm describing here is closer to what's going on, but even that would be light years ahead of any other brands, what they're doing with their impacts. Now, is it worth $1,400? Eh, definitely trying to recoup some of those R&D and tooling into some expected low volume sales. But as a wheel gun, let me tell you, once you set up four profiles like M12 threads, half inch, M14 threads, 90, 100, 150, 165 foot pounds, it's dialed. Not so sure about locking lug nuts though, we've gotten lug nuts consistent with this, but those not so much. And if you need a torque wrench for that anyways, there goes a lot of your time savings. And finally, with this thing, you need to be careful on your 10 step learning process. Sometimes it can go rogue and want to tighten a, for example, 100 foot pound spec up to like 280. Not sure if it momentarily loses Bluetooth communication, but we had it happen on a lug nut and on the dyno once. If you don't use your good sense to let go of the trigger, you're gonna nuke something. Our last critique would be that their instructions using a torque wrench to remove a bolt and then dial in that torque, maybe not the greatest. On a bolt tension dyno like ours, this proved to be crazy accurate and rivals a torque wrench. But removal torque on a new fastener can easily be more than 10% off of tightening. So a transducer or a skidmore machine on site would realistically be the true way to target the correct bolt tension and torque you're after. Or using the line method if you're in a tire shop to double check your findings basically. So is it accidentally a mechanic or really a tire guy's dream? Yeah, in the same way that maybe winning the lottery is. I've worked around guys who don't even know where the torque wrench is in a shop. 
So having one of these instead of counting the Ugga Duggas would be ideal. But you're also trusting us to have our phones out for one key reasons rather than TikTok during work, so that's always gonna be a gamble. We make episodes every Friday. Click subscribe if you don't wanna take a gamble on remembering that too. Big thanks to Jay at Ohio Power Tool, and thanks for watching.